Every so often, I like to spend a whole lot of time painting a single model, painting to the best of my ability, and looking back on them, I can tell just how my ability has improved. But sometimes it's also enjoyable to paint models in a very simple way, with some rich colours to create a nice looking model with less effort. I recently picked up some armoured officers for Conflict 47, the sci-fi expansion to the World War II bolt action game, and I thought whilst I've got them, I might try a simple painting style for armour and show you lot how it's done with a very easy to paint method. The boring stuff was dealt with before filming, cleaning the parts, gluing them together and priming. I will just mention that I wanted to prime them in green, but my green ran out as I was priming these, and so I finished them off with some tan. My first step with the brush, as you can see here, is to do some really messy panel lining, which is an unusual way to do a very usual technique. Once the model is complete, these black lines will create a strong visual distinction between the parts of the model, which is a very useful thing when the models are so small and are viewed from a meter away or more. Usually this would be one of the very last steps, with great care taken to not spoil the rest of the paint job. However, if I do this first, I can be a lot less exact, and any messiness will form some of the weathering for later. Next is to use some dark green on a lot of the armor panels here, and I'll also use a lighter green in a couple of moments. Rather than trying to make a complete coat of paint, all I'm doing is adding a few spots around each panel. This is because I'm taking full advantage of my primer colour, even if it's not quite the colour I had originally intended. If you are following along at home, you might want to use different colours. You might want greys for a winter scheme, tans for deserts, or others. My scheme being mostly green, I've put all of the dark green spots at this stage over the outer and the lower sides of each armor panel. Moving on to the lighter green, I'm putting this again on the outer sides, but also on the upper sides of each panel, or any part that's pointing upwards, including the toes. This will give some measure of a lighting impression. The sunlight coming from above creates light on the top and shadow underneath, and these spots will subtly recreate that. Here is a quick comparison of some of the models with these steps filled out. Firstly just the primer, then the black lining, and finally the spots of dark and light green. Even with such a small amount of effort, and not a lot of time, I've managed to strengthen the shape and volumes of the model, and that will be visible from the usual gaming distance. But let's add some more detail, with very much the same technique. This time I'm bringing in some browns to act as some mud and weathering. And for those of you making desert schemes, you might have to consider which colours will look good as your armour colour and your weathering colours, but that's not actually too hard. A mix of tans and browns placed correctly around the model will end up looking pretty good. This darker brown first went only on the legs, where I put the lighter brown over most of the rest of the model, and once complete this should give the impression that they've been trudging through the mud. I commonly also add orange as well to act as rust, but for my officers I want it to look like they've got the brand new armour, so it might be muddy from them trudging through the mud for a couple of days, but it hasn't had time to go rusty. You also might notice that so far all I've painted is the armour panels of the model, with these inconsistent spots of paint. Well, now let's try at least to paint something properly. As nearly the whole model is metal, there's no skin or fabric at all. I thought I'd pick out certain panels as being unpainted metal, just to add a little bit of variety. And for this, I painted them all in with some grey paint. However, as I've got black in all of the recesses, I left those alone and just painted in the middle and the raised areas with this grey, trying to get an even coat whilst leaving the edges black. I'll note here that most of you at home won't be using a grey paint at this step, but you would rather be using a metallic silver. The reason why I'm using grey is because I made the crazy decision to paint my entire bolt action army with non-metallic metals, rather than using metallic paint, which is what most painters use. And well, I've come this far, I may as well continue. I've only got a few more models of this army left to paint. For my non-metallic metal, I laid out a lot of where the highlights will be at this step with a lighter grey. I'm not being all too strict about their exact placement, 
or the gradients between the greys, the, um, the gradients, if you will. This just needs to give a rough impression of the non-metallic metal because finishing this up will be the very last step. As you can see with this interlude, the differences in the last few steps are much more minor. Adding the brown and the greys for the metal, it has slightly darkened the overall tone, but all of these details are blending nicely together. I wanted to pick out the hands in the Soviet symbol on the chest just to emphasize them a little so that the next step doesn't totally obliterate them. And the next step is an all over glaze wash. Going on thick and heavy at first, but I'm keeping my brush moving to make sure that none of it sits around long enough to pull. Rather than acting as a wash, which primarily darkens the recesses, and I've already done that with my black lining earlier, I'm leaning into the filter side of this mix to filter all of the paint that I've applied to every part of the model, which will darken all of it with the same dark brown and tie all of the work I've done together, making it seem like a coherent paint scheme. Once that's dry, I have to start taking quite a bit of care, but because of the way that I've laid out my paint scheme so far, we're very much at the end of the process, there's just a couple more steps. That non-metallic metal comes back into play. All of that light grey highlighting I did before has been muted by the filter, which means that if I use the exact same light grey paint, that now looks lighter in comparison, and I can have an extra layer of highlight. And to pick it out even stronger, I used a white paint in the smallest spots and lines I could manage, bringing out the specular highlights and the reflective edges. I very nearly went along with using this same grey and white edge highlight on all of the armour panels as well, as that's how I've painted most of the vehicles in my Bolt Action Army so far. But I thought I'd try something different here, because I wanted the, this armour to look new and not as worn and weathered as some of my other stuff. Using my original light green, seeming lighter now than the same light green under the filter, I can visually emphasize the edges of all of the armor panel, and coupled with the black lining from the beginning, each part of the model has a painted shape that is so much more visible from further away than it would be otherwise. Now, I could certainly spend a long time doing this, picking out every edge perfectly, and improving my not particularly amazing non-metallic metal, but for the few hours I've spent on these models, as well as it's such an enjoyable, simple paint scheme, I'm really happy with how these came out. And they're all ready to lead my speed-painted bolt-action army into the weird war of Conflict 47. Let me know in the comments section below if you've got any ideas for my next models, or comments about these armoured officers. Check the description as well for other stuff I get up to. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.